Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about the clock of long now. And I like this project too much to uh, you know contain my excitement. Now, first we have to understand what the heck is the idea. The idea is here is basically something that forces us to think us in long term basically this individual basically uh, danny hills he has a very long uh, presentation i have provided the link down below and he uh, realized something very interesting is that back in the old days quote unquote old days uh, when oxford was built they had like big big giant oak woods uh, as a like a mainframe building now they rot it's wood they will rot eventually so the idea was uh, during one individual's uh, lifetime it was like okay now you have to find a replacement or like you know person who was responsible for maintenance and he was like panicking he's like dude nobody you know figures out like uh, where can we find something this large like giant oak wood it's like uh, the forestry department is like uh, call them up it's like bro we plant trees for this reason like 100 years ago once the building was built a plot of land was devoted just so we can grow in 100 years a uh, replacement for this like you're supposed to do that like that's a cycle like every 100 years or every 500 years you're supposed to do this and he was like whoa like this is thing that we used to do like plan for hundreds of years and this was like not in like oh only oxford did that no many universities many churches has this sort of a uh, kind of long-term thing so uh, Danny Hill had a like a you know, shocking moment. Now, why the heck Danny Hill is so important? Well, here's the deal. Uh, Silicon Valley, he's the founders of that. Basically, he laid the foundation on which many of the modern technologies built. Basically, uh, Silicon Valley is not one individual. It's like hundreds of individuals laying the foundation on which some smart individual like uh, Jeff Bezos, like uh, basically Bill Gates, like uh, other individuals, they started to make products and make it useful. But who laid down the core foundation? These individuals. So that's why Danny Hills is kind of important. Now, he was like a, I am uh, what we call MIT genius, so to say. And he was going fast. I want to make supercomputer fast and I want to make it even faster. So every day he was spending, he was like, let's make it more faster, more faster. And he had like a bang moment is like what the heck and he realized that uh, thinking in short term is really bad for us now i like capitalism but there is one thing that i truly hate about capitalism and that is uh, stock market and stock market amplifies our worst impulse that is short-term thinking basically it takes our short-term thinking it takes from uh think about a day to like let's sell and buy stocks in less than a second hundreds of times in a second like that's happening right now and people are like why the heck prices of things going randomly up it's like yeah stock market like it's a freaking ai it's like things that have not even been made is bought and sold before it even comes to reality it's like what the heck and everything becomes bonkers that's why like uh, metals that are supposed to be cheaper than another metal ends up being co uh, costlier it's like stock market is like really bad so he had that kind of moment it's like as a humanity as a civilization we forgot long term like if you talk, talk to anyone who's like uh, plant a tree and then we're going to utilize this tree like you know hundreds of years from now they're like what who cares so that was a like big shock to them that's why this important uh, idea is so important now he started to talk around with his friend and uh, again the person is this individual like this caliber of individual have very high individual friends so one another friend uh, basically Stuart Brand he also uh, got interested into the idea and he was like okay let's be serious if you really want to do this if you really want to build this we have to have a foundation so he created the foundation uh, the long now foundation and they had multiple ideas it's not just a make a clock clock is like a, you know a large project but they have multiple projects and the idea was people will start donate people will start donate their services their skill set their links you know connections and all that jazz so it had a like actual core okay some people are actually doing these things and the first prototype of this clock clock because you have to understand this our modern clocks have like a four digit numbers for years basically 2000 2020 uh, 2025 2026 like four digits but when you're talking about 10 uh, thousand years you have to add another digit so in that clock uh, it was 01999 so they had to rush this clock because uh, the idea with this clock is every century it's gonna have a unique uh, basically chime to it so the chime change would have only happened at nine, uh, you know, 1999. So they had to do it. Like it is kind of a rush deal. So they had to deal that. And again, you may be like, why can't they shift it again? It will for 10,000 years. So it has to be absolutely clocked. Otherwise it will be a mess. Again, this is a hand wound. This is a prototype, but the idea was very simple. Uh, make small scales, multiple small scales, and then go to full scale, scale one. Don't just go you on it. So that was the idea. Now, Okay, they had the idea. Now they had the foundation and even Jeff Bezos funding. So 
what are the requirements okay let's sit down what do we need so first thing was longevity so for example if you really want to make a good clock you're gonna make atomic clock but here's the no atomic class lasts fundamentally there is not a, even a single atomic clock that will last 10 years most of them will be retired before even they reach 5 or 10 years or something better would replace them so fundamentally you need something that is long uh, you know long lasting and 10,000 year is a goddamn long while so fundamentally that's many high-tech options out simply because of that reason then we come to another aspect because you're thinking so far ahead you have no idea what the heck nature will do to your product you have no idea what the heck humans will do to your product so it must be maintainable now this is the reason why most digital technology is like use and throw it's like it's unmaintainable like old cars any uh, you know teenager can open it up and actually work on it and fix it modern cars yeah there is a this computer which is talking to this ic which is talking to this computer which this flow sensor yeah good luck with that so that's the whole point it has to be repairable with simple tools now simple tools because 10,000 years is such a long while the design in such a way what if we rolled back like let's something bad happen let's say world war 3 or something bad happened and it rolled back to let's say bronzes you should still be able to rip, uh, you know repair this puppy so no longer like oh you need laser stirring welding or you need uh, friction welding or you need this kind of advanced technology no no simple hand tools should suffice good tools awesome better tools even awesome but it should not be a necessary requirement so that's that's why like black box technology basically like uh, ICs in your digital watch yeah that's a no-go so these two things uh, rolled out almost everything then transparency this is a very critical aspect and the inspiration is from uh, Antarctica uh, computer mechanism basically that is found under the sea floor now I will not uh, Basically, I cannot describe this mechanism because it is so bonkers. It's like when the divers found it out, they tried to pick it up. It started to break apart. That's why it was in pieces. It was rusted too much. So they did carbon dating and every sort of dating they could do. And they kept doing it because it was blowing their mind that something this complex existed some, so far back. Now, uh, with uh, they collected it, preserved it to best of their relevance, but nobody was understanding it. And nobody wanted to touch this because it was crumbling apart. So they're like, okay, why not use X-ray? And once they did it, it's like, voila. You can see through it. Now imagine this mechanism without being corrosion or without having gummed up. You could just see it, how the heck it works. That was a necessary requirement. So idea is even in extreme worst case, you know, let's say the whole mountain collapses, uh, the product will still be there and you should be able to use X-ray and figure out what the heck it was. So transparency is a very critical requirement and that's like worst case transparency. Best case is like you walk around it and you see, oh, that's what you're doing. I get it. Like this is how this watch works. Like you should be uh, able to like a uh, modern clever individual should go in and has the ability to like if they study the object properly they should be able to recreate that watch again so transparency was a very critical requirement and that's why you will see everything has like a mesh architecture to it it's a very thoughtfully done so see and understand that's also a critical aspect and evolvability i have no idea what the heck that means simply because in their own terms it's like you should be able to improve the watch but i'm like that's a really not a good idea simply because if we had this sort of antiquity mechanism we'll improve it by making it digital so i'm not sure but again they have the foundation so the, I, I may be missing something and another aspect this is a very critical aspect it should be scalable now this is a core aspect there are many ways you can make a clock that is like for 10,000 years you can just have a giant piece of rock and figure out like uh, how the heck it's gonna weather so you could literally have like a rock formation and it's like okay if it were to this level uh, this line is uh, visible it's a 1,000 year if this line is visible 2,000 yeah that's awesome but you get the point it's not scalable so they wanted to have something that is not relying on tectonic plates or something cosmic that requires a giant structure to figure it out. They wanted something that is scalable. So basically a table size, basically this big enough, like basically how much you are seeing in your camera right now, something this big to a building size if you want to. So that was the whole aspect of it. It must be scalable. So they, you can make it small, not as small as your wristwatch, but small enough where it's like something, uh, you know, you can have in your school or library, things of that nature. These are the requirements. Now. Because the moment I'm going to say to someone is like there is a watch that runs for 10,000 years and it does not have any advanced technology and it's self-powered. We were like, dude, that's perpetual motion. Well, it's not. It's technically solar power. So to digest something this complex, you have to research what we call uh, Atmos clock. I have provided the video down below. And the idea is basically because we have a sun and we have a dark, basically day and night cycle, there is a temperature difference that happens because of sun. What if you extracted that energy, not sunlight itself, but the temperature change, because that will happen even in indoor, that will happen inside a cave. Day will be warmer than uh, basically night. 
no matter what happens that will always happen does not matter whether you are in winter day and night still will have a temperature difference and these systems are so sensitive that if you have a temperature difference of one degree celsius one whole degree celsius this puppy is like bro i got this i'm gonna wind up for like you know around six months some of the well designs one and uh, practically speaking most places uh, they generally have three to four degrees celsius uh, up and down during day and night so most of these watches they never have to be hand worn you just once you start it you do not shake it because the, the pendulum is kind of fragile so if you don't poker with it this puppy is like bro i'm gonna keep time for hundreds of years unless something breaks or something uh, you know damages it but that's the whole point it is doable we have been doing this puppy for 150 years so yes and again you can buy this if you have a very big deep, uh, deep pocket so good luck with that so how the heck they are achieving this sort of magical technology well there is energy in that temperature difference it's solar energy fundamentally but it's not that much that's why we don't feel uh, like you know our uh, buildings following apart because hey night time contracted too much daytime it's very little so you have to have a mechanism that utilizes that little bit of energy thankfully we have springs that do that however if you utilize spring on a normal pendulum to uh, keep that tuk 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 uh, normal pendulum while it's very awesome it's very energy intensive so spring will not be able to wound up you have to use a very uh, taut spring and that will not work so they needed something that is very gentle so enter torsion pendulum clock so instead of your clock going tuk 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 it's like a twisting now because the gravity is equal on the plane it's a very uh, gentle it's like very gentle and uh, it has a very slow bit so if you look at any premium luxury watch hand pieces all of them are working without battery that's why they have a pendulum inside unbalanced pendulum and you have to supposed to wear them and that's why when you see uh, dr strange movie they pull out the giant uh, basically uh, watch collection all the watches are moving those are called uh, watch founders and those are supposed to keep your watch uh, running now it's a normal technology we had that from 1960 but problem is those are very high bitrate equipments like uh, how many times that tick 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 is happening inside that watch that's very high and problem of that is the higher the beat the quicker it runs uh, basically wears down and if you want something to run for 10,000 years yeah that's not gonna happen and when you have limited energy source flat out not gonna happen so this system is fundamentally designed with very low bitrate the basically desk uh, lamp size one that you can buy right now they have a bit of around two bits a minute so to say so they have slow bit and that has another benefit the slower the beat the lower the wear and tear on the equipment so if you make something huge and you have something gentle with that it will never wear out like it will take freaking thousands of years to wear down so fundamentally that's why this uh, atmos clock so the 10000 year clock is very big version of this atmos clock so uh, because the atmos clock also has a uh, hands to show like which uh, time it is day and date uh, is there this the people have to realize if you really wanted to show date and time for 10,000 years you cannot show uh, basically minute seconds those things no flat out no so how the heck you gonna like you know uh, show people time so you have to create giant dials sun dials kind of scenario where you have this giant the image of this my uh, basically thumbnail you have this star field you have sun you have moon now these are big things they are like multiple foot across so these are big things they will take a lot of energy to move and all that and that's the whole point this watch has two sections section number one that is keeping time that is the atmos clock but it's not going to tell you for it to tell you you have to hand wound it basically there are uh, giant uh, systems where you pull up a giant weight and that weight falling down will show you the actual display now what will happen if let's say somebody let's say one month ago uh, did that the clock basically the clock face will be stuck at that point now what will happen let's say after one year somebody comes and wants it again it will reset on accurately because it's keeping time in the background on low energy it's always going to have a accuracy on time like i got this like this is exactly let's say year 5000 this is exactly year 6000 it always note what time it is it's just not going to display you until you ask it so you have to interact with it for it to show you time and that was by design so when you are talking about something this long term everything drifts even quartz watches that are very damn good compared to mechanical watches of rolex and all that jazz it's they are really good but they still drift and when you are talking about drifting a few seconds a day in 10,000 years, you're gonna be drifted for like freaking 10 years or 20 years. So how the heck you calibrate this puppy? And you have to design in such a way that something else is not gonna calibrate it. So you utilize sun as a fixed point. And we are assuming uh, for good reasons that sun's gonna be here for 10,000 years. So there is a window that has a giant crystal in there. And that crystal is very strong, solid, like indestructible crystal. And it's gonna focus light through a slit, a very narrow slit. And the way it's engineered, the light will only fall on it every noon. Every day is noon 
the light will fall on that and light will fall on a cable that will stretch and that will reset the clock so basically that whenever that event happens the clock knows for a fact the day has happened and it's noon time now what will happen in a bad weather no problem the clock will still keep working but this is a calibration step so this calibration step could happen like uh, once a year and it will the clock will still know what exactly it is and ideally speaking the place where it is uh, is supposed to calibrate almost every day some days once in a while if rain happens or something bad happens it's like not gonna do that but most of the time it's gonna calibrate itself based on sunlight now if you know about sun system you know for a fact that sun drifts like there is an infinity sign to sun there is a wobble to our orbit so to say so you have to design a compensation mechanism where it's like no i'm going to compensate and this shaft is that compensation mechanism and because we are planning for 10,000 years earth wobbles in that kind of time frame like when you talk about people uh, when you hear people talk about basically ice age earth was in a different kind of quote unquote wobble state Earth will go back to that kind of wobble state. So you have to compensate for that. Otherwise, your time piece will drift. So this, this is why this curve is like a non-repeating. It's not like every year it's going to very precisely designed. So it's going to keep uh, new calculations based on their uh, current uh, geological models from NASA and all that jazz. So for 10,000 years, with very reasonable accuracy and given the fact this is a sloppy system this is also a sloppy system but if you combine these two sloppy system you get accurate system that's the whole point and it's not trying to tell you this millisecond this second it's second is not even exist in this day so that's the whole point it's more than good enough you have two sloppy system that are counter checking each other and you're gonna have awesome accuracy so sun and earth wobble is already accounted for so they figured out how the heck you're gonna compensate for this system so calibration is done it's not like you human have to calibrate it it's already taken care of now, how the heck are you going to make something like this? Well, first, uh, any Tom, Dick and Harry will like, let's make it out of like, you know, awesome materials like platinum or titanium, things of that nature. But reality was humans are the biggest danger to this watch. So how the heck you make sure people just don't steal or destroy it? Basically, don't make it worth stealing. So uh, the idea is basically like make it like a Taj Mahal. Now, Taj Mahal itself is very important. But how the heck you make sure people don't destroy it out of jealousy or stupidity? It's like you jewel the walls with a lot of uh, basically gems, precious stones. So what will that lead to do well basically think of it this way you are a looter you look at the wall you look at the jewels you steal the jewels and you walk off and once you sell it in the market people know for a fact that you have already robbed that place the place no longer has any value so it discourages inherently destroying the whole wall because again it's already been taken care of what's the point of doing it so it's like very few people very few uh, fanatic ideologies is gonna do like you know destruction after that so once you have like something what it quote unquote sacrificable uh, nobody's gonna tamper with it and that's why the core mechanism is built in a such a way is like dude what i'm gonna do with it and like big bulky equipments that are very hard to pull out and like just made out of normal steel there is no value in that but the steel they are using is very specifically chosen it's a marine grade stainless steel i'm like why the heck you are choosing marine grade when you are in a desert inside a mountain the reality is in 10,000 years we do not know what the heck is gonna happen and corrosion is one of the most uh, destructive thing there is so stainless was a definite requirement but they wanted to be absolutely sure that even if this place gets flooded uh, get uh, done through a mudslide somehow because be mindful this is a mountain a tall mountain and somehow even those things happen it should still survive intact enough where antikrita mechanism could have been scanned this should be in much better position than that so that's the whole point and when you are talking about something that is physically moving you need bearings now bearings wear down so how the heck you make a bearing that does not wear down you may be like grease it while uh, grease it properly or oil it properly or you may be nasa and you like okay just don't use steel system use uh, ceramic bearings benefit they are awesome side effect they are ludicrously expensive thankfully uh, mass manufacturing has reduced the price of ceramic bearing to such a point when this project started each bearing was costing around a few million dollars to now it's in a fidget spinner so to say so ceramic bearings are very awesome and because of the whole system it has a very low bit rate ceramic bearing don't even need any kind of ceiling they're like awesome they don't need to have grease oil or because those things pile up dirt and once they have they're they like basically grinding themselves to death so fundamentally you do not want that and that's why this is the counterweight that's you supposed to pull up and it's gonna show the time and if you pulled it up uh, very long it will take like you know few years to fall down so if somebody wound it up correctly properly fully uh, it's like yeah you keep seeing time uh, year year over year year over year but not for 10,000 years for 10,000 years that uh, day and night cycle is the power source so the reason why this project excited me so much is basically it's a dream and we as a humanity has a re recently entered in a phase where everybody is miserable and everybody stopped thinking about future and that was the whole point uh, the if you watch any interview of that director is like uh, bro like when i was in 1960 1970 everybody is like 2000 is gonna be future okay awesome but once we actually started to reach let's say 1990 
the future was still at 2000 it was not like in 2010 we're gonna have amazing thing that did not happen like future got stuck and uh, because our humanity is like uh, facing so many big problems those big problems will take big time to solve and we want them oh no no we want uh, you know global warming to be solved in four years i'm like that's not happening now give 400 years we got this we can handle that now you may be like okay it's not gonna like you know we may not have that luxury here's the either you start to fix it or you just simply give up and once you show people like okay think in four years think in 12 years things in the people like yeah i give up and that creates a very vicious feedback loop where it's like uh, i have seen so many dangerous comment in my youtube channel not this one hindi one where like people were saying some horrendous thing you know let this uh, you know pandemic be a good thing and like uh, that was bad because you have to understand we human maybe we are bad but here's the nature for from nature's point of view we don't even account for anything it's like yeah mass extinction which please we have been doing that for like six times at this point in time imagine it this way let's say tomorrow sun sneezes it's like actually a big solar um, coronal mass ejection at the right place at the right time bye bye planet's atmosphere and we won't even make a difference at that point it's like poof gone the planet is now roasted and that would be like a normal day for a sun or let's say we say oh we have nuclear warheads here's the zar bomba the big boy it will look like a firecracker compared to a simple super massive super volcano which happens every few uh, you know few million years or something like that like it's a fixed event it's not a if it's a when event that happens and it wipes out like everything we are doing to the planet of super volcano oh, look cute they think they can affect something or whatever like a big asteroid is like today is the day earth goes boom what happened it's like we are making things we are making bad things we are making good things that's part of life good and bad will always happen at the same time life and death always walks at the same path so that's a fundamental thing that's why we have to think long term we have to think okay what will happen to our children what will happen to their children only then we can be are we being a good an- ancestor that was the core quote from that individual's uh, perspective and i realized that it's like am i going to be like a in- responsible like i am making people uh, more educated am i making people more aware i am ma- giving people hope like of course uh, filter the scam out so they don't waste it because every time you get jaded you will get jaded to a point where like i don't believe in anything and that's a really bad position to be so we have to filter out scams but you get the point we have to have hope and that is very necessary and just to signify that hope this has a mechanical computer yes a mechanical computer uh, that is going to play a basically quote and quote melody old midi to so to say and it has 3.5 million melodies now you're like why the heck you going to build that kind of complex computer mechanical computer out of million dollar equipment on a watch reality is every day you going to wound this puppy up it's going to play a melody and that melody will never repeat for 10000 year and this was very deliberate option it wasn't like, oh we designed it such a way that randomly happened no it was by design the reason was very simple if you go there it is very hard to reach if it's very difficult very frustrating and if you do all these things it's going to reward you with once in a lifetime kind of event like no two chimes will be exactly the same and that's by design so it's like no i listen to this kind of tune nobody else uh, know what that kind of tune would be so that's a very awesome so the watch is designed such a way that it will keep time without interruption it knows what time it is and if you want to interact basically this uh, three handle wheel that people supposed to rotate it's going to pull up the weight and drop it and using that energy it's going to uh, show the dials as like what exact time it is and uh, if there is a lot of uh, temperature variation between day and night it will automatically wind because they design it such a way that if too much uh, day and night fluctuation happens the energy gets dumped into this system so that's the whole point basically to see the time you have to interact with it and uh, you will be rewarded with a very nice melody that only you would have heard so that's really awesome those this project kind of gives me hope that people are thinking long term it's like yes we have a future we like people are saying oh today is the bad time i'm like do you really want to live in 1800s do you really want to live in 1500s do you really want to live in 5000 years ago or 3000 years ago it's like do you really like so fundamentally we have to like you know kind of break our barriers and really start to think it's like good and bad always will happen and we are just uh, here for a blip so understanding big things focusing on good things that's necessary it's not optional it's necessary So this was my presentation on basically the clock of long now. I hope you liked it. Learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.